Welcome to uh, House of Pops. I'm Mazen Kanan. I'm the co-founder and CEO. My name is Mancela. I am the Chief Popsicle Officer. I overlook the factory here. Mazen was managing the, um, one of the ice cream business for the region, and there was uh, always a lack of a healthy, refreshing option. So this is where we saw the opportunity and we decided to jump into the health and, and wellness uh, trend. And this is how House of Pops was born and it, that's why it's one of our key, our key pillars. And this is where a bit the, uh, we complement each other in that role. Marcella has done culinary studies. So she was the driving force behind all the flavor, innovation and the production. And I brought more the management part uh, given my experience. So I think it worked all so well from a market opportunity and from our skills and competencies. I'm La Costa Rican, I'm from Latin America and this is our traditional ice cream. So yes, definitely it, it impacted the flavors, it took us some adjustment to the region, but yes, it, I would say it, it impacts the flavors and the overall R&D process, yes, I'm always looking for tropical foods to add on. I think we faced a lot of challenges. One of them could be the team, no? Yeah, the team, because we believed in the brand. So I will say three years down the line, we, we, were, we needed the right caliber to really make a huge jump. And we needed them to believe in House of Pops as much as we did, right? So we wanted to recruit people that came with a big background, like for a solid background to, to really help us deliver this. Yeah, because it's not always easy for someone to come and leave his career in an established company and join us and join a startup, irrespective if you pay money or you don't pay money or how much you give them. That's one. Another thing was cash flow, because initially, yeah, if you want to build a brand, it's very expensive. Cold chain is expensive. There are big players, so you need a lot of capital, and you did not take any investment, so it was bootstrapped, and this proved another challenge as well that we found our ways between moving a bit step by step and at other times taking support from financial institutions. But this remains actually a challenge until now. So I think for the team, we have been able to create a compelling vision and the people started seeing House of Pops everywhere. This has really contributed to building a strong brand image and a strong vision that, that people believed in that. And also we were able to give a good remuneration company culture as well. We really have a great company culture and there's a lot of benefits that maybe other multinationals were not giving us the time, like flexibility. Yeah, free ice cream. <laughs> free ice cream. <laughs> no, but as well, there was a big drive for the people that joined, for them to develop. Usually when you are in a multinational, you have a more structured approach to things, while here they have a blank open space to really develop, let's say, marketing. We deliver an experience. It's not just a product that's on the shelf. Like, we, will, we believe in creating experiences for the customer, and this will create loyalty at the end of the day. For example, the, the one that comes top to mind is Kayari. You know, the local perfume brand. They were launching a, a perfume that had apple tone, and we designed a popsicle for them with this exact uh, flavors. So this was really successful and, and created a lot of hype. We do things that make sense to the brand, to their commitment, to being transparent, good for you, good for the environment, good for the society, and anything that's happening and any party that is against good for you and against good for the society naturally will not come in a collaboration with House of Pops. So 